Germany today still bears the marks of its morally burdened history. The remnants of the Berlin Wall that divided the city during the Cold War. The stark lines of Nazi architecture. And now, a massive work of public art, a few hundred meters from the German parliament. The memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. The genocide of six million. For Germany's post-war generations, the insistence on human dignity is one way of coming to terms with the horror of the Holocaust. My generation is still morally responsible uh, for the Holocaust. Uh, I think uh, it doesn't matter if I committed the crime or whether it was... Uh, no, it doesn't even matter whether my grandparents personally committed any crimes or are guilty of um, you know, committing such crimes. Uh, that's irrelevant. These were so outrageous crimes. And they were not just committed by individuals. They really were committed by an entire society. It was a collective crime that was committed. And that explains why I think there's a collective responsibility. When I was a child, we, we traveled, we made a school trip to Denmark, and children in Denmark would throw stones at us and yell at us as Nazi kids. You know, they were right. Taking responsibility for the sins of past generations is a powerful moral idea. But it's not clear that Kant's philosophy can make sense of it. For Kant, we are responsible only for the acts we freely choose, not for our country's past or for the crimes of our grandparents. Do you think this idea that you've articulated so eloquently of identity being shaped mm -hmm. by nation, culture, history, could Kant make sense of it morally? Probably not. I think for a number of reasons. A, because Kant did not have, I think, a strong understanding of the psyche. I mean, he, it's, it's, you know, it's not a psychologically informed philosopher. To some extent, that's irrelevant. He would consider the idea of the sense of guilt, I think, or the sense of shame, or the sense of inheriting something from, you know, generations before you. I don't think he would have even thought about this. But would he go even further and have a principled reason not to attribute any moral responsibility? Probably it's interesting. Generation. I mean, it's interesting when he, I mean, he doesn't speak about this, so, it's, so right. we can, we're right. just speculating. But you are right. I mean, to some extent, probably he would have been against a generation taking responsibility from the previous one, because he, somehow that would also mean that generation is just an instrument of an earlier uh, generation. Kant's insistence that morality means stepping back from our particular identities raises a difficulty. If all morality is something I will or choose, what about obligations of solidarity? Obligations bound up with the history of my people or my country. And there's a bigger question. Is it possible to define justice without first figuring out the meaning of the good life, without first reflecting on the best way to live. These days, we try to avoid bringing questions of virtue into debates about justice and politics. People disagree, after all, about the best way to live. But can politics really be neutral on moral and spiritual questions? To explore this, 
we turn to what may seem an unlikely place. 2,500 years ago, in ancient Athens, we find a more demanding idea of citizenship and of politics than is familiar these days. For Aristotle, politics was not just about maximizing GDP or even protecting individual rights. It was about the good life. Aristotle lived and taught in Athens in the fourth century BC. 